have have your dungeon master tips also changed because you have such a body of work now as a dungeon master and things that you have experienced? Like what 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 gets you most excited to keep on doing this all the time? Because you are you create your own worlds and you're creating new worlds every time. You have a different dynamic with your, with your players. When I when I see you for the first game and each character is introduced, it is my favorite joy to see your reaction to those characters and to see everyone else's reactions. And frankly, mine. Like, I'll be <laughs> completely honest, when Laudna showed up, I was like, yes, <laughs> this, is, this is my show. Oh my God, I love it. But, but, yeah, so, I'd say the, 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 tips, uh, the st- tips remain, but they've evolved and they've expanded Yeah, because we've learned from each other. I often see discussions online, whether it be social media or online forums and such, where people will be like, I ran a game and we impl- implemented this house rule, you know, this, this, this house rule to our game. And I'm like, that's really cool. I never would have thought of that. Maybe I'll consider adding that to my game. We have, we have much more connectivity online, which while it comes with its drawbacks, it comes with the great benefit that we can share these cool things that we thought up or we got to experience in a game and offer other people to take it and implement mm-hmm. it themselves. You know, and I've, I've done that a little bit with my game and other people have enriched my game through their experiences and we all just kind of are in this space to share. So um, my player tips have changed in the fact that I've just learned a lot from other people that have enhanced my gaming. So I would say if you're looking to really kind of further expand your horizons as far as what can really make for an enjoyable gaming experience, find some positive communities out there in the tabletop space and see what some people are doing and uh, creating and sharing about their games, whether it be a really cool encounter they did, or about a really cool story beat that they created. People are sharing these wonderful memories from their home games and it might inspire cool things for you to run in your game or cool things for you to introduce to your DM and be like, this would be a cool thing for us to implement into our campaign. Or as a player, be like, that's a cool concept. I have a character that I think has been inspired by this story that I wanna play really badly. So, uh, you know, if you can, I, I say find positive spaces online because it is the internet. Yeah. Um, and step away if it ever gets too negative. But there are some really, really cool things being shared in the community that can just trigger inspiration where you're not expecting it. Well, I've seen from you, if, if I can interject, my perspective on like when you're dungeon mastering, you give the players so much space mm-hmm. to tell that story. And sometimes I have seen dungeon masters not give anyone any space. Mm-hmm. This is the story we're plowing ahead. You know, uh, <laughs> thanks for showing up. <laughs> You've never done that. Uh, you you give them the space to create these characters and to create these moments and have this back and forth. And I can see the joy on your face because there's nothing I find more fun than being a dungeon master who has to do nothing. It's my favorite moment. It's my favorite <laughs> moment. I see you'll be like, God, Matt looks so angry. He hasn't been able to say anything for an hour. I'm like, I am living my best life right now. You have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. Those moments are absolute bliss for me. And I will say that also comes from having a group that I've been gaming with for a long time. Yeah. There are There are some games where if it's a new group at a table, Leaving that space can be awkward. Sometimes the players need the DM to drive the story a bit and you know, kind of give the opportunity to pull them in and get them to a place where they're comfortable enough to begin taking the baton and running with it. So I, I, I will say giving that space is a wonderful place, but sometimes it's an earned place that comes with just playing some, you know, some time. So don't feel like as a DM that you, know, you, you have to always back off all the time. Uh, you want to give the player space. You want to entice them, but also don't be an overbearing DM where you're, you know, you feel the story needs to be driven forward all the time and you're not giving them the chance to interact. That balance just comes with finding the dynamic with the players at the table. You know, there's no, there's no perfect 100% all the time right way to do it. You know, that's part of what makes tabletop games so magical is there's so many different ways to engage and play it and enjoy it. I also like, um, you're not too nice. <laughs> when it comes to rules like the rules are the rules and if someone dies they die or if something's dangerous it's just dangerous like you were in the wrong place at the wrong time and I appreciate that because I think that is so important to players to never get a sense of we are plot proof mm-hmm. that sense of like nothing can happen to me I'm a big part of this plot you have to have a little fear, I think, to level set. At least I do when I'm playing yeah. my characters. That I, these all, everything has consequence. That makes the world three-dimensional to me instead of two-dimensional. I, I agree. I, I think 
for me, that that's the story that I enjoy the most. Writing that line between heroic, like high heroic adventure, but with real consequences, both socially, physically, you know, uh, to me, that that those are the stories that really enthralled me growing up. The real stakes, because without the real stakes, sometimes the heroic choices and the sacrifices do not have as much meaning or impact. Um, so it's it's finding that balance between the two. But that also, once again, depends on your game group. There are some people that maybe are going through some hardships in their life, and playing these games for them is a form of, of kind of therapeutic control that they wouldn't have in their life. Mm -hmm. In which case, you know, character death can be a very traumatic thing. Right. So that one's something that comes with being clear with your intent with the game, that everyone being very open and conversing about what they're comfortable with and what they're looking for. So while the way I run my game works well for our table, that also comes because we all trust each other and we've had conversations about like, all right, in this campaign, we're all cool, character dies, character dies, you know, everyone's like, yeah, that's great. And we've been that way since, since the very beginning. Everyone's like, that, that, those stakes make it thrilling. Those stakes make those moments in combat extremely nail-biting but exhilarating. Those moments when a character falls become extremely heart-wrenching but also very memorable and cathartic to work through that, that, that tragic story. And so as long as the players are on board for it, hell yeah. I am completely there with you and it's one of my favorite things about running this game. If you liked this interview and you'd like to see more, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell symbol so you're notified anytime a video like this comes out. Thank you so much for watching.